This video is about a table. Just kidding. This table is going to have some isopods on it. And here are my Porcelio Sevillas. These are the brown isopods with the white skirt. I really, really like these. Let's see if I can pick one up for you. Come There you go. Here we are. There's our little guy. I started out with six of these, and uh, I think one has passed away, so I think five are left. And I'm hoping that was just a, you know, I'm old and I'm going to die kind of thing, and not, um, I hate these conditions and I'm going to die, because I'm actually really falling in love with the Sevillas. They're really cute, they're really active, they're really beautiful. I mean, look how curious this guy is. He just wants to know what's going on and where he is, and they love to eat. And they're fast, but not too fast, and I really find them wonderful to handle. So, Porcelio Sevilla, doing mostly okay, but one has died. Wish me luck. Here are my Armadillidium Espanoli. Here's one that just molted. Shirtless guy. Uh, Armadillidium Espanoli is a white, round isopod with some off-white markings. I would guess they're a little bit pinkish. Oh, he's holding awfully still. Maybe he's scared. Usually they run. I'm really enjoying Armadillidium Espanoli. I think they're a good balance of fun to look at, fun to hold. I'm very encouraged to see that I've been seeing a lot of babies, and I do like their little cube-shaped faces. They're a little Cubaris-like in that regard, at least to me. Now, so I'm going to put them back. These are the Cubaris Platin Tongue Song. They are kind of oblong-shaped with dark body and some yellow markings down the center. I have not been loving Cubaris Platin Tongue Song. I just, I never see them. They're really tiny and they kind of run really, really fast when they've been spotted. So not pleasant to handle. As you can see, I'm not holding one in my hand. I have it on a little, uh, whatever these are called. Oh, hi. You've come onto my hand. You just showed me, let me look a liar. So there he is exploring me. Maybe there's a reason people like these. Um, I have not been thrilled enough by them. I will probably be rehoming them soon because I do need to cut down my collection and these are not particularly grabbing me. However, if you like an isopod that runs really fast and that you can't feel on your fingers, uh, these are great. So yeah, Cubaris Platin Tongue Song. I have two, count them, two Armadillidium maculatum colonies. Armadillidium maculatum zebra. They are black with white stripes. And let's see, this is a relatively young colony. I got them just as some extras, some juveniles. Ooh, I found a big one. So here are the babies. Look at that. They just had babies pretty recently. Don't know if you've noticed this yet, but I find picking up isopods to be incredibly challenging. They're just, I just don't want to squish them. Noticing this particular zebra, the white stripes are kind of off-white, which I think is pretty neat. Anyway, so he's calmed down now. I think he's mid-molt. Um, he's just deciding what life is like. I do like their fringed edges, but oh my goodness, are you going to munch on me? The fabled... Isopods munching on people moment. Hey, is it yummy? You gonna exfoliate me? That's really kind of you. Give me a little manicure. Isopod manicure, folks. You saw it here first. This is my much larger colony of Armadillidium maculatum. I've got some yellow zebras, a lot like the zebras you just saw, except that their stripes are yellow. Here are some babies chilling in an acorn cap turned bowl of food. And wouldn't it be nice if you could just live in your food bowl? Quite a few vibing on this cork bark here. Springtail colony is looking great. I love yellow zebras. These are probably some of my favorite isopods. They're fun to watch. They're fun to feed. Feeding response is great. They're brightly colored without being, with all, all the associated difficulties of being brightly colored. So there are my yellow zebras. Black with yellow stripes and some fringed edges. Now I've got quite a few Armadillidium vulgari colonies because I was seduced by all the morphs. So let's start with the biggest pain in my ass. These are my 
Armadillidium vulgare magic potions, although I'm seeing something suspiciously orange in there. What's going on? Let's find out. Ah, a surprise Punta Cana. These have been escaping. I don't know what that what the deal is with that, but that's an Armadillidium vulgare Punta Cana, I think. Doesn't look like the rest. It's got a orangish body with some dark center. I whipped out the macro lens so I could really show you that pattern. This particular magic potion is <laughs> flipping over and freaking out, but it's got some... Hi, buddy. You're just a little guy. Baby talk counter. Little guy on his back, congrobated. Hating me for sure. This one is white with some yellow markings and some red spots. And now that I have picked him up and he realizes that I'm not going to eat him, he has calmed down, I hope. This one has come onto my hand, which I think is just really sweet. Want to show the, the public your face? Yeah, look at that little face. Look at that little guy. Next are my orange vigors. I really enjoy orange vigor. I mean, look at it's orange. Uh oh, I'm spilling. Let's pull this closer. Look at look at him. She's orange. I I love an orange isopod. Those are some baby orange vigors. I think. Honestly, I don't know anymore. Are these, you know, are these orange vigors? Are these hets from when I had the uh, gem mix? I don't know, but this particular orange vigor is really orange, almost a bronze color, which I like a lot. He's got somewhere to be, so let's see if I can find someone else. Here's a really, really nice one, and it's also got this gold highlighting on its sides and look at that sweet little face hey buddy but yeah that's armadillidium vulgare orange vigor and this one has a nice white skirt i just love the variation with orange vigor too i just all kinds of different expression levels and they're all just so beautiful i do have a colony of normals that i collected from the wild in may of 2020 i want to say and out of those normals i have been breeding what I am calling Armadillidium vulgare yellow dot. Let's see if I can pick one up for you. They are notoriously slippery. So here's a low expression one. So they've got the pro typical normal gray or dark background with some yellow spotting. I've been isolating these isopods with yellow spotting and trying to get a much higher expression line. Here is one individual that has a bit of a higher expression level You'll see, as opposed to the isopod I showed before, there's a lot more yellow, and the yellow is more widespread on the sides and the back. So I think it's working. <laughs> Some of them have also been developing this brown skirting, which I think is really neat. And this little baby, I think, is a good example of what I'm trying to go for. It's got the gray center, it's got the brown skirting, and it's got a lot of that gold. I don't know if it's showing up on camera. It's really challenging to get, but uh, yeah, let me know, folks. Does it show up on camera? Armadillidium gestroi. This is a relatively new colony, so I've fed them recently, but the feeding response is not excellent. Here's a close-up. They are a fairly large isopod, you know, about the size of my thumbnail, and they are dark brown or black with some yellow spots down the sides and their edges with a light skirt. This one has woken up and realized something is wrong. And this one, if you can see it in the crevice there. Oh, really hard to spot. Real hard to spot. However, oh, everyone's going to run. Everyone's going to run. Hey, buddy boy. That one in the crevice right there. He's got white spots or, you know, a lighter yellow. And I'm wondering if that might be a morph called Zinger or if it's just a different level of expression. I honestly am not sure. This one's got more of a brown skirt to see. And I really like Armadillidium gestroid because I like isopods that get big. And I like isopods that get colorful and I like isopods that are fun to watch. And I'm told that when there are higher numbers, they start becoming out and come, becoming braver and are more fun to watch. So... I will be keeping these and hoping that they become more engaging. Last armadillidium species here in general, probably becoming one of my favorites. This is armadillidium paracai. So this is an isopod that is called paracai because it's got these little 
bumpy ridges. I don't know if you can see them on camera, but they're there. And I just think they are so freaking cute. They are kind of a gray color with a lighter skirt, more of an oblong shape. And this particular individual has some even lighter gray spots on its sides, but not quite as light as its skirt. And he just doesn't know what's going on. But yeah, definitely becoming one of my favorites. They are really fun to watch. They are really hardy. They have a great feeding response. Not as aggressive as like any Porcelio species really, but you know, cute. And, and they conglobate, which means they roll into a ball, just like any Armadillidium species. And, and I don't know, you know, why these would be my favorite as opposed to like something more brilliantly colored. I mean, they're up there with, with yellow zebras for me, and I just think they're so freaking neat. So I hope that this colony gets really big and fun. They're already fun. I, I love them. Armadillidium paraca, everybody. You may have seen these featured in some of my shorts. These are Porcelliano Days Pruinosis Powder Orange. I mean, they're just... Honestly, I am not even going to attempt to try and pick one up for you. It's just not possible. They are just panicking that I've opened the enclosure, which is understandable because I've been manipulating them quite a bit, you know, moving them and separating them and selling them. So those are my powder oranges. I've used them in a few terrariums, and they've been great. They're very prolific. They're very hardy. I honestly would recommend these to a beginner because they are hardy and prolific and have a great feeding response. They're fun to watch, and they're full of personality. So Porcelionidae's Pyrenosis powder orange. They are kind of a long, skinny, fast isopod that is a brilliant orange. They have some little bitty europods on the ends, and they are soft-bodied, which again is why I am not going to be picking them up. And now moving on to the bane of my existence, I mean the other Porcelio species I have, uh, Porcelio ornatus, yellow dot. I had some high yellows for a while, they all died, so I tried, actually I have one high yellow left if I can find him, I'll show him to you, but I am now trying the hardier relative of the high yellow, the Porcelio ornatus yellow dot. Let's see if I can pick him up. I wanted high yellows because I liked the yellow color. Yellow dots are nice. I was told from the internet that they are really day active and, you know, hardy and, you know, protein hungry and fun. And I think fun is subjective. Hardy and active and protein hungry and fun to handle. And here is our little guy. There he is. Parcelli or not his yellow dot. Doesn't know what's going on. They are kind of long and thin. Uh, this one is a good size, I want to say maybe half an inch long. He is gray with yellow dots near the end of his body and near his sides. He's coming up onto me. This is great. This is all I could ever ask for. There he is. Hey, dude. See, this is what I mean. Really, really fun to handle. Once they get on your hand, once they know they're not dying, they will just climb right on. They'll nibble on you, they'll explore, and I love the way they just, I mean, all isopods swing their, their little antenna like that, but this one especially is just like, got any food? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? There he is. I have noticed a bit of a die-off, and I, I don't know why. That's really discouraging, so I'm hoping that they will bounce back, because, I mean, look at that, look at, look at, I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. Look at him. Just a really swell isopod. And like any isopod keeper, of course, I have some Porcelio Scabers. These are uh, some Porcelio Scaber lottery ticket that were gifted to me, and this guy is the one I'm going to show because he's out and about. This is a... I'm not too well versed in Porcelio Scaber morphs because I've never actually kept Porcelio Scaber until now. Uh, this, is, this is some red one. I mean, orange one, I guess. Um, by the way, this thing I did where I put just... Piece, chunks of oak in their substrate, that was a bad idea because it's getting pretty moldy. As you can see, gross. I don't know what to do about it though. Probably just take them out. But yeah, that is an orange Porcelio Scaber and some wild type Porcelio Scaber. They're very fast. Yeah, I think this is mostly just wild types, oranges and lavas, but I really, really like the lavas. That particular lava looks really neat. He's got a lot of black. Last Porcelio species I'll show you today, which has definitely been a challenge for me. I've had it for a couple years. This is Porcelio spatulatus. Got them because they get big and they're very, they're kind of flat and they're round 
and they've got this skirting and they're gray and I've heard them be described as prehistoric looking, which I'd say is pretty accurate. I'm going to try and get one out for you. One of the reasons they've been so challenging for me is that they really, really don't come out. They love to hide and I like seeing my isopods. So here are some hanging out on some decaying wood. This one got, you know, more of a brown coloration going on. That one's darker. And look, it's just, just so flat. And not only are they flat, their skirting on the edges is divided. It, it, it looks like a, a pleated skirt, like a real garment. I love Roselia spatulatus. I love looking at them when I can dig them out and look at them, but it, it's not nice to bother your isopods, so... It's not my favorite thing about them that in order to see them, I have to dig them out. I contemplated selling them, and then every time I like happen to find one exploring, uh, without me having to open the box, I go, oh, I should keep them. They're so wonderful. I just broke the wood. Oh, hey, buddy, there you go. And I just uncovered a bunch of babies. Look at all the babies. I just think the babies are so cute. Look at that little one. I don't know if he'll actually keep that pattern into adulthood. He's got a little pinkish hue. I don't know if that's just because he's a baby or because he's got some kind of patterning going on. But <laughs> look at him. There he goes. They were underneath the food, so I think they were waiting for me to leave before they resumed their meal. Look at their little Europods. I just love Porcelio spatulatus. See, look, when I see them, I'm like, oh, they're so beautiful. Oh, they're so cute. And then when I don't see them, I'm like, why do I have these? I never see them. Sticking out his antennas. Look at his little face. Oh my god. Oh. Look at that sweet little face. I love it. So anyway, that's Porcelio spatulatus. <laughs> Finishing off this tour with two of the same species in different colors. Oh, hello. There they are. That is Cuberus marina, little C. And Cuberus marina also has that kind of armadillidium vulgari shape, but just a little more round, just a little less oval. And Cuberus marina, little C, is gray. Some of them, and if I can find one, some Cuberus marina, little C, have kind of an orange, an orange uh, uropod area. And if I can find one, I'll show you. But they are fast, and they don't really want to be seen. Here's a good example. Hi, thanks for showing us your butt. Yeah, so check it out. I don't know why it's got that orange patterning on the butt area, but I think it's a nice little variation. There's some babies. Now, I thought Cuberus Marina Little C were going to be, you know, oh, I'll never see them. Oh, they're boring. Oh, they're not a fun color. But that's not true. They're really really fun. They're really cute. Yeah, I can't really handle them that easily, but they have a great feeding response. And unlike Armadillidium vulgare, they have, you know, they've got the round shape, but they also have these flat skirts on their sides. And that one, I think, is a really good example. If I can just get you out of the shadow there. See, he's round and he's got the flat skirting. He looks like a loaf of bread. And I love bread. So this is just perfect. And I've got their cousins here. Uh, along, along with these springtails, uh, this is a very little Cuberus marina glacier. They look like Cuberus marina little c, except for, you know, they're not gray. They're white, hence the name glacier for the morph. I've just fed them. You get a macro view of their food. And this is also a, a great way for me to show off my springtails, apparently, because they are also eating what I fed the isopods. I don't know which particular springtail species this is, but it's orange and it's really fast. And I like these better than the slow wiggly white ones. There's that rogue Punta Cana. I don't know how you got in there, but you know what? I'm going to leave you in there to see how you fare. Yeah, he knows he's not allowed in there. That's why he runs. Don't run. I just want to show you to the internet, okay? So that is a Cuberus Marina Glacier. Trying really hard to run away because he's scaled. There's one. He's running. They're really fast. They're really fast. Caught one on a leaf. So I can really show you. I mean, they are just white. Aside from what they've just eaten that you can see in there. Don't run. They are just white. I mean, look at that. 
and a little bit off-white too. No, I think they're white. Yeah, they're just white. And, oh, he does not want to be here. He does not want to be here. Oh, buddy boy. There's a good, there's a good shot. Hey, buddy. Bye. I mean, look at that sweet little face. <laughs>